nerds. My name is Lottie, the Tech Whisperer. On today's episode, we're going to be having a look at a project that I have been part of for about a year and a half. I've been fortunate enough to work in, on, and around tanks for approximately seven years now, and this is one of those really fun little adventures that I've had along the way. If you've ever wanted to own your own tank, this is a video that you might actually find quite interesting. We'll be covering the ins and outs of acquiring, maintaining, moving, and actually driving a Centurion main battle tank. If all of this interests you, or you just really like tanks, by all means stick around and enjoy the adventure. This story begins as most good ones do, on a hot Australian summer's day in Cairns. Myself and Peter were asked to come down and have a look at a tank that a friend of ours had recently purchased. What we were greeted with was a large hangar filled with aircraft, trucks, engines, cars, and of course a Centurion main battle tank. This specific one is an Australian version that was used in the Vietnam conflict. Despite being very similar to their British counterparts, there are a few telltale differences between Australian and British Centurions. The side skirting is often the first thing removed. The front armour plate has been extended by an extra 40mm. These often have road wheel additions either on the left or the right, or at times both at the same time. On the rear of the vehicle is an extra 100 gallon fuel tank. The plan was pretty simple. Get it started, move it onto a truck, and then a short little hop to Victoria, the other side of Australia. What started as a very easy job quickly turned into a nightmare once we figured out that the carburetors were leaking. While most modern petrol engines utilize a fuel injection system, older style engines like that found on the Centurion use what's called a carburetor. We'll cover exactly how a carburetor works in another video. For the purposes of this video, all we need to know is that a carburetor is a very essential part of the engine. It combines the air and the fuel in the system and mixes them into a perfect ratio for combustion. On any normal vehicle, you would simply remove the carburetors, clean them up, test them, and then put them back in. The carburetors on a Centurion, however, are not so easily removed. These ones are called updraft carburetors. From here on out, we'll simply refer to them as the worst kind. Therefore, the intake manifold for the engine sits atop the carburetors. The intake and carbies cannot be removed from each other while in situ. This means a near total strip down of the top half of the engine must take place. This includes throttle linkages, choke linkages, and most importantly, the water system. Unfortunately, due to the lack of lifting equipment and the extreme weight of all the components, we decided to allow the tank to move to Victoria before being fixed. And so began our road tripping adventure. Traveling out of the home state of Queensland was easy enough. The clear skies and clean roads made travel very simple. In true Queenslander fashion, there were more than a few roadworks to stop us along the way. By all accounts, a perfect road trip. With high hopes, we entered New South Wales. Thank you. 
Near 3,000 kilometers later, we finally entered Victoria. Our prize lay somewhere in rural Victoria, so heading away from all the major cities, we encountered traffic of a different sort. After a long journey, we finally found the old girl sitting in a storage facility by the sea. Other than a few modifications, she was left exactly as we had last seen her in Queensland. Needless to say, we had a lot of work on our hands. Naturally, the first thing we did was replace the carbies. Upon closer inspection, not only were the carbies leaking, but they were also filled with a preservative. This preservative had clogged up much of the internals, preventing proper operation, even if it wasn't leaking. With the first problem identified, we stripped the carbies down, cleaned them all up, put them back together, and put them back into the tank. Once reinstalled, we could finally start the Centurion and fault find for other issues. In order for the Centurion to run reliably, we would need a few things. Fuel, air, spark, compression, and for all of this to happen at the right time. Thanks to our little test run, we knew we at least had all of the ingredients needed, just not in the correct quantities. Currently lacking the time needed to clean out the fuel system, we bypassed it altogether using an outboard tank. The fuel pumps were in decent enough condition, however we decided to bypass those two with an electric pump. Airflow is easy enough to check without the air filters. With it, we also confirmed at least a decent amount of compression without any major testing. Checking for spark and timing would not be as simple. As a general curiosity of Centurion tanks, the Meteor V12 petrol engine that they utilize is a derivative of the exact same Merlin V12 petrol engine used in Spitfires. Because of this, they demonstrate many of the redundancies of aircraft engine design. A twin magneto setup and a 24 spark plug setup. The purpose of this is twofold. As each cylinder has two spark plugs, each powered by a separate magneto, one magneto may fail and the other can still provide enough spark for a complete ignition. The other purpose is to provide power at both low and high RPM. This is achieved by separating the timing of both magnetos slightly from each other. Again, we'll go into the specifics of how this works and why in another video. Before we could do anything, we first needed to ensure that the engine itself had been correctly set up for timing. We do this by removing the rocker cover and checking the timing on the crankshaft. Fortunately for us, the engine was indeed set up correctly. We already had our suspicions about the magnetos. Instead of timing them straight away, we decided it would be best to pull them off and give them a good clean. We tested them both before and after cleaning. To no one's surprise, they were indeed faulty. For comparison, a healthy magneto should jump out at least a centimetre. The next step is to reinstall the magnetos. As previously explained, there are two magnetos. Both are marked differently, one intake and one exhaust. 
These correspond to timing marks found on the flywheel. In order to time the engine and the magnetos together, you need two people. One person needs to install the magnetos as well as turn the engine over using the starter motor. In a rare stroke of genius, Meteor and Spitfire starter motors can be hand cranked from the top. The other person must lie under the tank and check for the timing marks as they appear. Timing does have a bit of an art form, as well as a few extra idiosyncrasies not mentioned in this video. However, with the engine and magnetos timed correctly, we were now ready to move the tank. We would be moving the Centurion to its new home in South Gippsland Tank Adventures. Tank Adventures is home to a number of other armoured vehicles, including a second Centurion. This is a fully operational business, so punters like yourself can actually come and purchase tickets to ride on these very machines. Link in the description down below. The last part of the journey is inaccessible by most trucks, so the Centurion would have to drive up itself. Centurions are pretty straightforward operationally speaking. Two tillers, a handbrake, a footbrake, a clutch, and a throttle. In excess of 50 tons, their extreme weight can make them rather unwieldy, especially on hills. Centurions are notorious for their fuel consumption. Needless to say, we had to stop more than a few times. With the weather improving and yours truly behind the wheel, we made good time. of work and many many kilometers of travel the two tanks were finally reunited there is still much work to be done on this and all the other vehicles in the collection for now though this is where this part of the story ends if you liked this video please hit like and subscribe and leave a comment down below letting me know what you want me to cover in future episodes Thanks for watching and stay nerdy tankies.